So I've been using the Focusrite 18i20 for a few years now, and it was working fine. But uh, the third gen came on sale at my music store, so I thought it'd be cool because it's 3.0, and I thought you know better drivers, newer technology should be a good improvement. So I picked it up and traded in my old one, and the latency was actually worse. So I was I was surprised by that at first, and I was looking for subtleties in the sound quality, and I was like, nope, I don't notice any difference in sound quality. And then I turn up the gain on the channel about halfway, and it starts to hiss. And my second generation gave me a little bit more headroom than that. So I find the third generation is actually worse than the second and the second one was kind of um, intermediate level preamps to begin with so here's a quick example of how noisy the preamps are on the channels once you go past the 50 percent mark it's just sounds of the ocean completely so listen to this it's quite bad that's that's pretty low quality when you think of it because like you only, you're only going to have from zero to that point in terms of headroom like the rest of this channel is completely garbage so you, you don't have the ability to mic things quietly you have to always be on a like a very loud setting so i mean it's good for drums i guess you know it doesn't matter if you're just drumming using drums but uh an acoustic guitar or something a little bit more delicate and nuanced you know like you're, when you're recording an acoustic something really sensitive you're not going to be able to use this preamp so it's just going to be too noisy and if you're recording at too low of a signal then you're going to have to overly compress it afterwards and it's going to sound really pushed and artificial so it's just just an example of how noisy they are so i was pretty bummed out about that sort of exchange that that purchase because that was uh, around eight hundred dollars and i traded in my previous one unnecessarily really but um yeah then i ran into a clip uh, by philip mcknight the other day and he was talking about not getting accurate representations of his uh ox box so what started this journey was the ox so I have an amp that I absolutely love. It's the Marshall 2061. It's right there. It's a hand-wired, 20-watt, plexi-esque amp. When you crank it up and you take your SG and you plug into it, to me, I just love the sound and I'm super happy. And then I plugged in the aux and what happened was the aux, uh, it sounded more amazing, especially with headphones. I got a little bit of reverb, a little bit of cabinet sims, and I recorded in the, in the computer and every time it kind of thinned out and there was all this discussion about the preamps and this rack stuff I was gonna need and all this stuff. And so what started this journey was this box right here, which is the uh, Universal Audio Volt 2, which I highly recommend. Uh, I had the Scarlet and I got this and immediately this blew that out of the water. And that told me immediately what was going on because everything sounded great until I got it on the computer. So I was like, okay, and I kept more plugins, more, well, compressor, another thing, EQ, more stuff. I was fixing the sound. I spent more time trying to get the thing to sound on the computer like it just did right here, even though with the aux, it sounded perfect in my headphones. So I'm not just trying to take the piss out of Focusrite. Uh, they're pretty good and they're well-made in certain regards, but I think they just get way too much credit and they're overly used in a way. And uh, maybe they were just mass marketed during a time period and that's what caught on because of the price point and they are well priced for the intermediate kind of home studio musician but you know for someone who's looking for accurate sound it's it's not a good product actually um just pointing that part out it's like it's not really a studio tool at all it's more of just a beginner's tool to kind of get you going and that's fine it is what it is but you know, just, just pointing out some of the, the downsides to this product that I don't see a lot of people talking about. Um, but when I saw Philip McKnight mention the lack of accuracy and transparency in the recording, that just really nailed it for me because I, I had that instinct as well. And uh, good for him for pointing that out. I love his channel, by the way. It's a great channel. Check it out if you haven't subscribed to his channel. But... Um, yeah, just the transparency of, of the focus rate is not very good. So if you're looking for accurate recordings, 
um, you should look into Universal Audio or something better. Or there's a bunch of different products that are superior. So yeah, that's that's everything. Merry Christmas. <laughs>